This is L Armenian Reviews, and today I am going to review two new shows off of the WWE Network. The first one will be in another episode of WWE 24. This is episode two, called Booker T's Sentence to Greatness, which will follow Booker T's life, of course, going to prison, growing up without parents, and of course, going into the WCW, and later his rise in WWF, and leading into the WWE Hall of Fame. The next show will be NXT TakeOver, which was the second big uh, live event that NXT produced. And this was the show that um, was probably the show that I first thought NXT is going to be something special. This was the first great show. Arrival was a good show, but TakeOver, I thought... The first one would turn into a great show, and I think this is really the show that kicked off NXT and made NXT must-see. But first, let's talk about the Booker T sentence to greatness. The documentary really, it it tries to go more of an upbeat mode, but I was kind of expecting and more interested in seeing more of his early life and going to prison and the mistakes he made and making it into a great story rather than just his career. And I think um, I think that's the problem a lot of people had with this documentary is it, it goes very it's very brief it goes very brief when he's arrested and you we were expecting a lot more from that they really showed that wrestlemania 19 match which um that was complete bullshit that the wrong guy went over there booker really should have been triple h in that match i think he never regained his momentum he had a lot of momentum <clears throat> going into that feud and um yeah uh they really made a mistake there he really should have gone over but the Triple H, so what are you going to say? Another problem I have is they really talked about his uh, relationship with Stevie Ray, and you really, this is again like the prison thing. They show him and Stevie Ray, his brother, had to fall and go. It went on for about five years. It's just really annoying. You want to hear more of that stuff, and you keep hearing more about his WWE career, and I really found, you know, we know about his WWE career. Everyone knows about his career. You kind of want to hear more about him. And the struggles he had to go through in his personal life, such as, you know, the falling out with his brother, going to prison, his early childhood growing up, making mistakes, and yet they keep focusing too much on his career. And I think that really, um, that really lost interest. Cause I really, I've already seen this stuff. The show, I mean, the overall documentary is okay. They show him and uh, Steve Ray making up, and they just didn't go into more what the falling goat was, and that's where I really was interested. And, of course, knowing what happened when he was in, uh, how he got arrested and what led up to that. It, it's very upbeat. It's a happy story, but it was nothing special. It was just kind of there. It just seemed like, you know, it was some, they promoted something that you thought was going to be really good and ended up being just okay and uh, it left you expecting a lot more and hoping for a lot more maybe they do this story again because the booker t story is very inspirational There's a, it's a really great story to be told but they didn't tell the full story they concentrated too much on his wrestling career and what happened to him the person and his re- rehabilitation they just they didn't focus much on that and uh the things that you wanted to hear about were over very quickly and Overall, I mean, the second episode, no, we're not even in the same star as the first episode, but it was still, it was okay. It's a watchable show. It's it's, it's a decent, you know, to spend 30 minutes watching. It's pretty good, but um, it really could have been so much more. Now, uh, let's talk about the second part of this uh, show, and that's going to be my review of the first, I mean, well, actually, the first NXT TakeOver, but the second NXT major show, and that was NXT TakeOver. The show started off with Adam Rose and Camacho, and of course, Adam Rose had this big entrance in which the whole party goes through the the arena. And the whole Adam Rose story is pretty sad. First of all, I have to say, this gimmick fucking sucks. I think people who cheered it are just... That NXT crowd cheers anything. It doesn't matter what it is, they'll get it over. Emma had a terrible gimmick, and I like Emma, but they made that thing over, and when it got up to the main roster, it flopped. Now she has a good gimmick, and she's actually doing pretty good. Adam Rose had the shitty gimmick, and when it got up to the main roster, the NXT thing, they're not going to react like him. They won't just react to everything. They hated it, and... It got no reaction and it flopped. And of course, what happened to him was pretty sad, you know, with his wife. Then, you know, he, we found out on the ESPN documentary that he has a sick kid, but that gimmick was just trash. And uh, Kamacho would, all, would also be released, so um, there's nothing to that match. It was just whatever. Yes, the whole party thing was just to get the fans into the show and make it seem as if the show's a party, but um, yeah, just a nothing match. 
Ascension versus El Loco and uh, Kalisto. So if you don't know, El Local is really Ricardo Rodriguez, who was the ring announcer for Alberto Del Rio. And he absolutely sucks. He is fat as fuck in here. You can see his stomach hanging out. He is out of shape. He can barely move. Everything looks clumsy. He sucks. Kalisto tries hard. He's okay. And the ascension here, I mean, I don't know. I get. I think Connor is terrible. Um, Victor usually has to work the majority of the match. But the thing here is, I think um, El Loco distracted me away from Connor because he sucked so bad. So um, this match was just nothing. It was a shitty match, to be honest. It was not very good. It was not long. So that's that. Um, yeah, just very forgettable. And El Loco was released, just like, it's funny, so the first two guys pinned on the show were released very shortly later that year. Uh, first Camacho lost, he got released, then El Loco, Ricardo Rodriguez, he got released. So, uh, not a very, uh, <laughs> not a very good show to lose on. You might get fired. Then, um, the match that, well, if it, it was on any other uh, show, it seems like. This could have been match of the night. Sami Zayn and Tyler Breeze had just a great match. This was awesome. Sami Zayn is the best wrestler to come out of NXT. And why do I mean that? In the ring, I don't think anyone... There's no one who has had more great matches in NXT than Sami Zayn. It's not even close. That's partly due because he was there about three years too much. But, I mean, he has had so many great matches in NXT. And this match with Breeze, this ruled. This was great. I just thought this was so exciting to watch, so fun to watch, so many great spots. There was one botch, I don't want to get on him, but uh, it was basically just Sammy trying to do the suplex into a power bomb. It was a little bit just too hard to pull off, but other than that, this match just ruled. This was a must-see match. If you did not see this match, uh, you really missed out. This um, These guys just had a great match, and I enjoyed every second of it especially uh, like when it really got near the end great match the only problem was the finish the finish was okay could have been better i know they had to have Tyler Breeze when they had to protect Sami Zayn. they had to do what they had to do but yeah could have had a better finish another thing i have to say tyler breeze has been a complete bust um again an example of how the nxt crowd is just too they're too gimmicky i know a lot of them are close to the wrestlers it's kind of that whole nxt thing is kind of like a big family all the nxt wrestlers are close they're all a family that's nice but they support everyone and anything and it just seems like i mean this is not a good gimmick it was cool i guess in that environment it just does not work on the main roster and it flopped badly so um yeah Sami Zayn, he's just excellent then we had in my opinion on almost any other takeover show you can't have a match better than this but then the match of the night was next natalia and charlotte It's worth noting before that they had Rusev kill Mojo Rawley and uh yeah I guess Mojo had some heat on him. They sent Rusev to kill him for like two straight years. Charlotte and Natalia, they they tore the host down here. Um just a great match. Such a great wrestling match. What I mean by that, it felt very much like a shoot, like almost like a jujitsu or a real amateur wrestling kind of match and everything felt real. That's what I really like. I really think that misses in today's wrestling. And this was just such a great match. Natalia might be the best uh, female wrestler in the company. But she can't show it because they don't have her in that role. The role they have Natalia in right now is more of, you know, just the girl who's going to help all the young girls get over as the veteran. And that's not a bad role to be in. But here she shows she is really special. And she was great. She practically carried the whole match. And Charlotte was did really well here, but she was still very green. And Natalia was just incredible here. This was just great. It had everything. It had all the emotion at the end. He had Brent Hart and Ric Flair shaking hands. He had Charlotte and Natalia hugging. Both of them very emotional. Uh, we saw Ric Flair very emotional. Very nice moment. Because I think actually this happened in 2014. And a year before this, or maybe more than a year, in 2013, that's when Ric Flair's uh, son, Reed Flair, died. That's also Charlotte's uh, younger brother. So obviously just very, very hard uh, for them to go through. It was just really a really nice moment seeing them get, uh, seeing Charlotte win the bell. And Rick's so happy for her. It was just really a really nice moment. I, just, I thought the ending was great. I thought the pre- prelude to the match was great. If you know, this was actually a tournament-style match. So uh, th- this was the finals of a tournament. Everything was just great about this. I loved watching this. 
and the women have had matches that might have topped this uh, since then. But man, I, I, this was just such a great match. This was such a uh, it was just such a great, well put together match for its time. I thought both of them did really well. Natalia is amazing, and Shirley uh, did really well for her time. And um, I love this match. In my opinion, match of the night, and that's t- with the show, like with Sami Zayn and Tyler Breeze. So with those two matches, this is already a great show, even before the main event. And um, yeah, I really 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 loved this part i just thought this was just awesome and this is really some great stuff with wrestling just great the main event they had a good match it was not a great match the problem you know having to top those two previous great matches before it is extremely hard and um the crowd was a bit worn out. You can hear the fact that they spent all their energy in the last two matches. They were really into Sami Zayn and Tyler Breeze. And they were even more into Charlotte and Natalia. And they were so drained. But by the time these two would go out there, it was the hard to have another great wrestling match. And they had a good match. But I almost feel if this was the third match, and let's say Charlotte and Natalia went on last, this would have been a lot, came off as a lot better. But it was still a good match. Nothing great. A bit better, I'd say, at the same level for maybe a tad bit above uh, Bo Dallas and uh, Adrian Neville in the ladder match. And uh, those guys at least had the benefit of having a gimmick match in which you can do a lot of spots. Here, they just had a straight singles match. So, it was a good main event. I enjoyed it. The problem was, the two matches before it, it was going to be almost, um, not impossible, but extremely difficult to top it and they ended up having a good match and a good main event and of course they did they had they didn't like again you know is it match of the year match of the night no but it was it was a good match so overall i mean two great matches one very or good to very good match this show ruled i love this show i thought this was great um i really enjoyed nxt takeover uh, great show Shar and Talia was awesome. Uh, Breeze. Another thing I loved is the format of the show. Every match seemed like it got bigger. The, it started off with Adam Rose and Camacho in a joke match. It had a tag team final match, which was, eh, whatever. Then you had a great number one contenders match, and the stakes got higher with this women's match with Bret Hart and Ric Flair in the corners of each one with Charlotte and Talia. And then the main event title match. So I really liked the format of the show, and I really thought. This was a a great show. Out of 10, I'd give this like an 8. So I, I really enjoyed NXT TakeOver.